So today's video is going to be about high-end lipsticks. This is going to be something I'm going to want feedback on because I'm not sure about this format. I started filming it, I'm on day four of five uh, when I decided to film the intro. And I'm not 100% sure whether or not I actually like the format of this video. Uh, I'm going to show you, I'm going to do another, another kind of wear and compare like I've done with the foundations, but with high-end lipsticks. So I've chosen five. Um, I kind of asked on Instagram what people would like to see and I've tried to incorporate some of those. And I'm intending on doing uh, other brands in future videos, which is why I want your feedback. Because I want to know whether this format works for you. Um, so I'm going to wear them for a full day. Each of them are going to be worn for at least seven hour day, the same as I've been doing with the foundations. The only problem with that is that a lipstick isn't necessarily designed to be worn for a full day without topping up. And I'm bearing that in mind. I know that not all of these lipsticks should be kind of held to that um, as kind of a, a benchmark. Like if it doesn't last all day, it's a rubbish lipstick. Um, but I do feel like maybe seeing how it wears away completely or seeing how it wears over a seven hour period is still useful because you will see how it wears. So although you're probably going to top it up before it wears away, you'll see, you know, if it, if it wears evenly, if it wears patchy or dries up or if it wears really well. Um, I feel like it will still be useful for you to decide where your money is best spent. One thing that I thought was quite interesting, the first lipstick that you see, um, how I review it initially, I then change my mind about in the second video. Um, and what I'm really enjoying about this kind of format of video where I'm filming it over several days, which I would have once hated the idea of, um, is I get a little bit more perspective. So by the end of the five lipsticks, I'll be able to look at them all and say, do you know what, I might have liked that one, but compared to this one, it's just not worth your money. The first one I'm going to try is the YSL. This is one of my favourite formulas um, if you're going to spend a little bit more money. The YSL Glossy Stains and the shade that I have is 39. This is a product that you can build up one layer and you get a nice amount of colour and a stain and the more you apply the thicker it is, the glossier it is, but the less likely it's going to last. So I'm going to do two coats because that's generally what I would do. So a nice amount of colour but not too glossy. I will come back to you in a few hours and see how well it's lasted. I'm fairly confident because I do love these products but the more I've tried, the more I've realised they are a little bit inconsistent and some are definitely better than others. Um, so we shall see. I haven't worn them in a little while. I'm interested to see how it lasts, especially because I'm going to the dentist today. Uh, so it's probably the worst possible time for this to be tested, but the best possible time because we really want to know this is expensive. It's supposed to last. It's supposed to be a stain and a really long wearing product. Let's see how really long wearing it is. So this is about seven and a bit hours later. Not bad. The colour's still really good. It's a little bit patchy. Um, but you know, as stains go, it's still kind of stained on my lips. I've eaten, I've drunk, I've been to the dentist, it's held up pretty well. I think it's pretty good. Next to try, we have this Estee Lauder Pure Colour Envy. I actually haven't tried this one before. It's the colour Envious, it's 340. It's a very, very bright red. I did try another one a while ago, and I know I was impressed, so we shall see. First impressions, such a lot of colour. It's so saturated, this lipstick, it's insane. You don't need very much of it at all to get a very, very bold, opaque lip. Very much like the finish. Um, I'm, mm, I've got lipstick on my teeth. How many times will that happen in this video? Um, I like the finish, it's creamy. It's kind of got a gloss to it, which is not normally my thing, but it feels very comfortable. But I'll come back to you later on today in several hours and see whether or not it does last as well as I remember. Didn't disappoint, I'm so impressed. It's been at least six hours now. Um, and how amazing is that? I mean, it's wearing away just on the very, very insides there, but I've eaten, I've drunk. It's been hours and hours um, and how well has this lasted? It's really impressive. I mean, to be quite honest, I'm kind of rethinking what I said yesterday about the, the glossy stains because although it did stay on my lips, I feel like perhaps there are other products out there that kind of do a similar thing and it is very, very expensive. So I'm going to kind of retract that. I don't necessarily think it's worth the extra money. I do like it and I would buy more, but you know, really being kind of brutal, it's not good enough for the £25 spend. Today's lipstick on trial is the NARS is it called a Velvet Matte? Yes, Velvet Matte Lips Pencil, and I have it in um, Never Say Never. My lips are absolutely horribly dry at the moment, um, and as I was applying it, it felt very, very dry, but pressing my lips together, it's actually really creamy, it's an odd texture. I'm going to work for seven hours now, well, seven and a bit hours, because I have to get there and back, um, but we shall see how it lasts by the time I get back. I will give you a little bit of an update of how it's been throughout the day as well, because it is a full, a solid, at least seven hours I'm gonna be out. Um, and there'll be breakfast and lunch and as many meals as I can fit in. We all know while we're at work, we eat and drink more than while we're at home. So it definitely doesn't last all day. <laughs> um, by about midday, I would have had to be reapplying this and it's really, really dry. It's, it feels, it's just like sat 
all the moisture out of my lips. It's not comfortable feeling. Um, not something I would necessarily recommend. I mean, in fairness to it, I wouldn't leave it all day. I have left this whilst I've been at work. It's been painful. Um, because I definitely wouldn't have sat at work looking like this under normal circumstances. But, in the interest of seeing how well it lasts, I wouldn't, I wouldn't kind of say that was a terrible thing about the product. I don't think it's supposed to be long wearing particularly. Um, but I really wanted to see how well it wore. I would say that you would probably top this up once or twice throughout the day, which is no big deal. But it didn't wear as nicely as some of the cheaper pencils that I've used. These ones, the Matte Balm. I love these so much and the texture and the formula of these is so much, so much nicer than the NARS one. The NARS is, kind of goes on a little bit nicer than a matte lipstick, but it definitely wears more like a matte lipstick. Very, very drying. Uh, whereas this is moisturising and I think it just generally is more comfortable to wear. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend the NARS. I know that they're very popular because of specific colours that they do and I think if there's a particular colour that you want in a particular brand, that's generally, I know for me, what pulls me towards a particular um, high-end purchase normally. Um, but if you're just looking for a pencil and you're not super bothered about a specific colour, there are other ones out there for a lot less that I think are a little bit better. Excuse my wet hair, I'm in the middle of getting ready. Uh, but I asked on Instagram the other day when I started filming these um, earlier in the week, um, what kind of brands you would like me to cover in this series? And one of the things that people asked about was Tom Ford. Now, do you happen to have one Tom Ford lipstick? This is the most expensive lipstick that I own and... Um, I'm not sure. I mean, up until this point, I would have told you this is one of my absolute favourite formula of lipstick. It's the Velvet, what is it called? Lip Colour Matte. I think they were called Velvet, no? Um, the colour that I have is Pussycat. I would have said this is one of my favourite, favourite formulas of lipstick. Um, very, very nice matte texture. Lasts a really, really long time. But I'm interested to see how long it really lasts when I'm leaving it for an entire day. I can't quite believe it, but it's snowing outside. I'm filming this on the 4th of March and it is snowing outside, just behind you, if you look around. <laughs> it's just snowing. Um, so yeah, this is a creamier texture. So, so nice. A little bit like the Estee Lauder, uh, or a lot like the Estee Lauder in the pigmentation factor. It's so bold and opaque, which I love. A little bit and it's like, boom. But you never know how it's going to last. I wish you could see where I was filming right now, it's hilarious. I'm basically sat in a cupboard because this is where my light box is and it's now eight o'clock at night. This has been on my lips for an insane amount of time. We must be coming up to 11 hours if it's not already past 11 hours. Um, I can't say it's comfortable, it's very, very dry now. I'd say after about five hours, up to four or five hours, really fine, no problem at all, but kind of just forgot about it. Um, five hours, it was still looking okay, but for comfort, I would have wanted to reapply it just because it was starting to get quite dry. So I wouldn't say that it's like long wearing, wear all day and you'll like it but it is one of the lipsticks that I will definitely reach for if I know that it's not going to be necessarily convenient to touch up and I want something that's going to not wear away in a really unattractive fashion um, because as you can see it is wearing away in kind of this section it's wearing um, more so I'd say than on my bottom lip and there's not a lot of actual lipstick left I'd say this is kind of just the very very final layer that has been worn down I mean it's a hell of a lot of money for one lipstick you would expect a lot from it but I think of all the lipsticks that I've got it it does give you something extra I skipped today yesterday because I totally forgot I was doing this so finally the fifth lipstick is going to be the Charlotte Tilbury between the sheets and this is the what's it called the velvet something I don't know if it actually says on the bottom of this it doesn't it's called velvet lipstick or something like that velvet what are they called velvet revolution matte revolution something like that um so anyway, this is the first Charlotte Tilbury lipstick um, that I've bought, and the first time I'm trying it, I'll show you it up close, it's kind of a, a rosy nude kind of colour. First impressions are not good. I had to really work it in to get the colour on there, um, and it has picked up, I mean, it, I've been doing this for a week now, um, or near, nearly a week. Five days with one that I've skipped, and my lips are feeling really, really dry, because I've been leaving the lipstick on all day long, which has just sapped all the moisture out of my lips and so by this point they're feeling quite dry and this has really picked up on every little area of dryness on my top lip there which is not pretty um and it's not as opaque as I expected to be very very creamy extremely creamy in fact I'm now wondering if this is in fact the matte lipstick that I thought it was I'm fairly certain that it is it's supposed to be a velvet lipstick but I'm looking in the mirror I don't know people rave about Charlotte Tilbury um, but so far I'm not impressed. It reminds me, not the same colour at all, but it reminds me of the matte, the Colour Sensational Matte from Maybelline. 
I don't know if you're going to be able to see a comparable texture on camera. Can you kind of see like where I'm coming from? This is the Charlotte Tilbury and that's a couple of swipes and it's not totally opaque even on my hand which is like smooth skin. It's not dry or kind of flaky or anything. Something about it really reminds me of that texture. It's not, it just, I can't get over how horrible that looks on my top lip. That sounds like I'm putting it on my moustache, but you know what I mean. Really not nice. And it feels, because it's so creamy, it just feels like that's just going to wear away to nothing. So I'm actually half outside right now, so apologies if there's noise, especially the dogs. But I had to show you, um, it's only been about four hours that I've been wearing this. I'm at my parents' house right now, and I've got like possibly a lip line left. I don't know what is going on with this lipstick. It is not good. Um, it doesn't feel as nice. It's not as comfortable and nice as a creamy kind of or satin lipstick. It's definitely um, an odd texture, but it doesn't last as long as a matte either. I don't know, I just don't get it, um, but it's definitely not my favorite. So as I said at the beginning of this video, this is definitely a trial run. I'm not sure whether or not I'm gonna make any more of these. Let me know if you'd like to see more, or maybe if you'd like to see me specifically pitting them against lower cost brands or specific products or something like that, let me know. Uh, one thing I have thought might be quite interesting is to share some social media feedback because I've been sharing some bits and pieces about these products as I try them and I've had some feedback on like Instagram etc where you guys have told me that you like or dislike certain things that I'm trying. I thought it might be quite interesting to share some of those things in a video whether I pop them up on the screen or I speak about them because when you're spending a bit more money on something no matter what it is you want as many opinions and as many reviews as possible so that might be quite a nice way to add balance to my review because I am just one test subject something I love you might hate you know that's how it goes um, and another thing is that I've only got one of these colors that I'm showing you and one color does not necessarily represent an entire line of products I mean for example with the YSL glossy stain it's a perfect example of that uh, once upon a time I did review these and compare them with the L'Oreal and um, although at the time I thought that the L'Oreal was better over time, as I tried more of each of them, I discovered that the L'Oreal is really, really inconsistent. I started buying more of these and I thought every single one I bought was perfect. Every one of them was the same formula and I'd, I'd wasted a lot of money on the L'Oreal one, at least enough money to buy one more of these. So I collected more and more of these as time went on and then realized that actually this range is a bit hit and miss as well. There are just more colors. I'd say the highlight of the five that I showed you has to be the Estee Lauder Pure Color. The color again was Envious, but I have other ones and I will definitely be adding to this collection very, very soon. I want a pink. Something that I also love, but I won't be necessarily adding to my collection anytime soon is the Tom Ford. Still my favorite, still a massive, highlight in my collection um but it's also a massive outlay for one lipstick it's a great thing to buy for someone you know if you've got like a makeup lover who is really difficult to buy for or the person that has everything i think they'd probably really love this the packaging is beautiful um which is part of what you're buying when it's a high-end product you want the packaging to be nice and this is gorgeous packaging uh, and the product itself i think is head and shoulders better than a lot of other products is it worth the money of course it's not but if you were wanting to splurge and you wanted to splurge on something that you weren't going to be disappointed by, I think this is a great one. Um, and the two major, major disappointments, I mean the YSL Glossy Stain, it's hit and miss. Some of them I really, really like and some of them aren't so great. Is it worth the money? Probably not. But I'll still probably buy them from time to time if it's got a colour that I like. But the two ones that I was so disappointed by um, are the NARS Velvet Lip Pencil and the Charlotte Tilbury Between the Sheets lipstick. I forget exactly what this is called, but it's definitely matte. After I applied it this morning, I actually looked online just to double check what the uh, like claims were. And it was supposed to be really hydrating, modern matte lipstick. Um, for me, it wasn't a matte lipstick at all. It reminded me somewhere between the Maybelline lipstick that I mentioned and the Revlon Matte Balm, um, but it didn't stay on my lips as well as either of those, uh, considerably more expensive. I did like the colour, but it didn't look nice on my lips. The finish wasn't nice. I wouldn't say that it was drying at all, but then it just didn't, it just wore away. The packaging on this one I would just want to mention because although it looks quite kind of um, old Hollywood glamour and quite nice and it's rose gold and people freak out about that, um, the thing that it reminds me of is Estee Lauder packaging about 20 years ago. So for me, when I saw this originally, I thought this is so dated. Um, and I'm sure it's supposed to look kind of retro, but it's not doing anything for me at all. I don't like the packaging. Um, the NARS pencils, pretty basic actually, quite, quite like the packaging of these, but the product itself wasn't good. Although it's not supposed to be necessarily a long wearing lipstick, it's definitely not supposed to wear away in the way that it did. It was just 
so drying it sucked every little bit of moisture out of my lips and wore away in a really unattractive way so yeah not my favorite also something about the charlotte tilbury lipstick that i found it was really it's difficult to put the lid back on it's not it's not got that click but it's you have to really force the lid back on to stay on the best packaging for actually keeping it together is this the magnetic click oh this might not be all that kind of fancy packaging wise but that clip is so satisfying. So that's it for today's video. I know I've rambled and rambled, but that's my jam. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's been useful for some of you maybe thinking about some of these brands. If you want to throw in some rebuttals in the comments, that's totally cool. Tell me I'm wrong, tell me I'm right, tell me to try something different, um, or maybe tell me what brands you'd like me to try next time. I may do a budget version of this as well, uh, which could be interesting. Let me know if you'd like to see that. Uh, but yeah, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.